The World Wood Bat Association World Championship. Scouts, check. Nerves, check. Rolling the game, check, check, check. One of the most historic amateur baseball tournaments globally is here, yet not in its usual spot, but it's still in Florida. Great competition in 2020. Can be hard to find, but not here. Day number three, moving day, and an opportunity to play in the field of 32. This man's my co-host. This man's team, the Dirtbags, is in. I'm Darren Sutton, by the way. This is Perfect Game All-American Khalil Watson. This is such a great event. You guys went two and one. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to you about you in a minute. But how much fun is it, even though you're going to have to play a million times to get to those championship yeah. moments, how much fun is it to be in that field of 32 with the best teams? Like, it's, it's incredible fun. Like, you playing against the best of the best, so... Like last year, not many people had that chance, but we've got to fit in where we fit in. So I believe like this was like a great opportunity for us as a team to get in here and especially two of the same organization right. to get in. So I think it was really fun. Help us understand this event from a player's perspective. I can sit and talk about it mm -hmm. all I want yeah. as a former player and an older guy. But from a player's perspective, how good is the level of play here in what used to be in Jupiter but here in Fort Myers? It's like, it's really, it's like really good. Like the pitchers that's pitches, they got to do whatever they got to do to get the better off their best. And like they got to focus, really focus on what they are capable of doing. So for as a player, it's kind of challenging for a next step to move forward. So it's a whole another level to plan and just impact baseball or uh, any other perfect game. But this one is just like, it's different. So as a player, it's like challenging. And you gotta be woken up for that challenge and move on. You stay for a minute, break things down throughout this whole show. Can you stay? Yeah. All right, we're gonna stay. Even though it's dinner time for him, he's gonna stay. Let's get started, not at dinner, but right after breakfast. A team that has moved on, certainly, and is thrilled to have moved on, the South Charlotte Panthers. And it was a shutout, and an improbable shutout that got them going and moved them to the promised land against a talented San Diego show. I was amped up. I was ready to go last night. Obviously the rain didn't let it happen, but you know, I was prepared. The coaching staff was prepared me and woke up this morning ready to dominate. When I took them out in the first inning, you know, the warm-ups were, I mean they were good. I felt strong and confident, but my changeup really wasn't there in the warm-ups. And so I went out there and after that first changeup I threw was perfect. So I think, you know, after that I felt confident. It was probably my go-to pitch for the rest of the game. Uh, it's, been, it's been a great event for us, you know. We, obviously, we regret, like a lot of people that's not in Jupiter, and letting these guys experience that that haven't. But the good news on this team is we've got a lot of guys that are returners from last year. Uh, had a lot of younger guys last year, still younger guys this year in some cases, and they uh, uh, got to experience Jupiter last year, so now they're getting, getting to be here. But it's, you know, it's the competition. I love this event. This is my third year being here. So, like, there's always that one team that you want to beat in your pool. And for us, it's these guys right now. Jay Connor, he's just being himself, going out there throwing strikes like he always does, spawning up with the fastball even though it moves so much, and throwing changeups, curveballs, sliders, and you name it for a strike. Let's go. Go on. Slider. Slider. I got my four seamer. You know, it's not a traditional one. I, I hold it traditionally, but. You know, it doesn't move traditionally. It moves more like a two-seamer or a sinker. It really depends on how much pressure I put on this finger, how I roll it off. That's probably my best command pitch, strikeout pitch too. I throw a circle change, four-seam, because I don't throw many two-seams. And I throw, not really a knuckle curve, but you know, something right there. It's more of my strike pitch. Try to throw it for a strike, maybe in the dirt, two strikes. You know, just try to pound the zone with every pitch so they don't know what's coming. He, uh, he's been good for us. And by the way, he's 16 years old, he's, even though he is a 21. 
you know, he, he can uh, play down in the summer as a 16 year old because that's his age. So once he's mature and phys more physical, he's just got all of it cerebrally and, and three pitch mix that he can throw pretty much anywhere he wants. I know my defense, they're perfect. I love them. I, I trust them with everything. So I, I knew I could pound the zone that last inning. And, you know, first batter, he hit it good, but I just kept trying to pound the zone, try to go compete and win. The San Diego show are really good, really talented. You know, they came here to play, they came here to win. I think we wanted it more. I think we showed that. Hi, I'm Jake Hunter. I live in East Rowan, Rockwell, North Carolina, small town. Glad to be here, and I just threw a shutout in the WWBA World Championship. Played for the South Charlotte Panthers. <laughs>So Khalil, you told me something very interesting in the spring, mm -hmm. about the spring. Yeah. You said, I learned that since I was shut down, I couldn't do anything. I started thinking, yeah. realizing this is my time now to fall in love with the game and maybe jump to the next level. Mm -hmm. Expound upon how you felt in the spring and how you put the right kind of pressure on yourself. Yeah. For, for the spring, it's really like, that's when like this is my last year of playing travel ball anything. So. When you got your last year on the line, you got to make a run for it. So when I said a quote about I woke up to the real baseball world, that meaning like everything started to hit me and I had to improve and work for something that's great at the end. So that's what I mean by I woke up to a different world of baseball. So that being said, I had to do more and play better and focus on my grind make sure I'd be on top. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. There is a man who woke up to it a little bit earlier than you. He's a guy who seems to be uh, in everybody's focus over the last mm -hmm. decade, and it's Brady House, yeah. your, your All-American teammate. Mm -hmm. So we know how he swings it, and we've seen already some pictures of it. Mr. Brady House, right now, here's your swing. This is my bat. It's a 33 and a half inch, 31 ounce. I like this bat mainly because it's an inloaded bat, and I and I prefer inloaded because um, whenever you get a hold of a good pitch, uh, it's going to go a long way. My favorite way to prepare to hit is just going in the cage, t work, and little drills before the game. So basically, right whenever I'm stepping into the box or something, I want to make sure just to get my uh, my little practice swing going before I step in the box. Um, just exhale, get, get everything loosened up. Usually I'll give a little stare to the logo on my bat and then the foul pole just to get my eyes working. So then um, I'm ready to step into the box. I'll give my little tap on the plate and then I wanna make sure that whenever he's pitching, by the time the ball releases his hand and gets halfway to the plate, I want this front foot to already strike the ground. I want it to, uh, everything to be down and um, ready to go by the time the ball gets halfway. So say if I want a fastball and he throws me a curveball for a strike, I'm usually gonna lay off of it or something like that. But my mindset changes whenever I get like, say, 0-2, 1-2, 2-2, anything with two strikes, I'm just in that mindset that, hey, I have to protect the plate. Like I have to hit anything that the umpire is gonna call a strike. I'm a big Braves fan, so I watch a lot of the Braves. So. Um, the two people swing that I like a lot is uh, Dansby Swanson this year and Ronald Acuna. I like Dansby because he yanks balls dead center, right center, and left field. And I could say the same about Ronald Acuna. He's just so calm at the plate. Watching on TV and hearing all the announcers uh, say how all these older people could even look up to him since he's a young player. He's just um, working pitchers all the time and um, having good at bats. If I get the pitch I want, I want to make sure that this is driving because like hips is a main focus on power and contact and all that stuff so front foot strikes boom this is driving into the ground my hip is going into the ground and then just make sure to rotate fully and stay through the ball so hands is like what i've been working on a lot this summer a lot of times i would come i'd strike all this stuff and then this would come out the the elbow would come out and therefore I'd be rolling over, I'd be hitting little fly balls to first base and right field. What I've been working on is just keeping this down, boom, staying through the ball the whole entire way and just hitting the ball where it's pitched.
Interestingly enough for you, as we talk about falling in love with the, the baseball world and waking up to that baseball mm -hmm. world, that means you put to sleep the football world. Yeah. Uh, while you talk about this, we've got some great clips of you with a football-like collision at home yeah. plate earlier today. We're glad you're okay. But what did you love about the sport? What will you miss about it? And why did you decide, I'm all in now on baseball? What I loved about football is that I get to like hit somebody without catching a charge. So like when I hit somebody, I feel great. And at the same time, not getting in trouble. And then another part that I love about football is that you get to compete and compete. It's not just one play that defines you on the field. You get to just keep going out there and making more than one play. So what I going to miss about it is the teammates because I've been on it ever since my freshman year. I started on varsity and we won three straight um, national championships and we played in state and we got three rings. So that's what I'm going to miss in the communication with the boys. Am I allowed to ask you about a player, put you to really to work as an analyst? Yeah. Okay, Michael Braswell, right? Uh -huh. Perfect game All-American teammate on that East squad. Very talented middle infielder mm -hmm. and pitcher. Give me a quick scout's nugget. We're going to really use you as an analyst. Give yeah. me a quick scout's nugget on Michael Braswell. He got fast hands. The way he get up there to bat, he's very like, he got so much energy. And I recognize that the day I saw him, that when he get up there, he don't take the light. He take it all serious. He might do a little dance around and all of that, but that's part of the game. So that's what I learned about him, that he has like a lot of energy and he's like quick with the hands and he can feel it and some more stuff. He can also talk a little bit, yeah. too. I don't know if you knew yeah, that, Yeah, he the talks way. to me a lot. So we're, we're about to use him in your role as a color mm -hmm. analyst. He and Tamar Johnson, uh, game day certainly, a team that's fighting to move on and a part of that 32 program. The San Diego mm -hmm. Padres scout team, East Cobb baseball, two color analysts, Johnson, Braswell, boys. Hey, I think this is your guy. I think this is your guy, Casey. It's okay. I need one. Let's go. My name is Tamar Johnson. I play for the East Cobb Astros slash Padre Scout team. I'm going to be your color analyst for today. Come on, Robin. That boy. That boy. Definitely, you need just to watch out for the small ball. You know, this team is very savvy. You know, they're very energetic. Just like me, I played them when I was um, 14 at the freshman WWA down here at West Palm Beach, but um, they're very savvy, so you just gotta watch out. You gotta play the game hard. Don't take no plays off because once you do, you just, they take advantage of it. My second at bat, um, dropped third strike. I ran it all the way out and um, they made an error, so I got to get on base. Stole second, made my way to third, and made my way to home, so that was a blessing. And my third at bat, I hit a double. Found a fastball and I um, smashed it pretty well. Uh, honestly, I think this is the best program in the nation. So I think we're, I think we have talent from top to bottom better than any team that I can possibly imagine. Our infield solid, our catcher solid, pitcher solid, outfield solid. I mean, I honestly believe we're the best team in the nation. So. We have a strong foundation, and if somebody messes up, then we pick them up. We play baseball. To be the closer for my team is just, it's just awesome. You know, it's just, it's really humbling for me. You know, because there's a lot of great pitchers on this staff, and to be able to call, able to call myself the closer on the team, hey, really means a lot to me. It's fun. You get to challenge yourself. You get to see how how good of a hitter, how good of a field, how good of a baseball player you are. You just got to show, you know, show these scouts. There's a lot of scouts out here, man. A lot of scouts. WWBA Championship is the best event and the top, the most heavily scouted event in the world. I honestly believe in the world. Because I've been here for three years and I've never seen as many scouts as the world, whether it be in Jupiter or in Fort Myers now. It's just the best event I've ever been to. Hell of a team win right there. That shows a lot of guts to come back in that situation. Hell of a job. Let's go. We got three tomorrow. Get rested. Let's go. Get somebody back. Let's go. Hey, Padres on three. Padres on three. One, two, three. Padres. Woo! So a subject I love when I have athletes in this chair to ask yeah. about is how it comes together. Look, I was a college commit, but that was in the 80s. It was very mm -hmm. different back then. There was no internet. You as a college commit have had a very different journey. And at the time, there were two sports in your world, as we talked about mm -hmm. earlier. Walk me through kind of your commitment to NC State, the recruiting process, and what you like most about it. Yeah, NC State is very close to home since I'm from Raleigh area. And I grew up actually in Virginia, so 
I moved up to Wake Forest when I was going into the sixth grade. So for my parents, it was kind of easier for them to get around and the home games that I do have, they can make. And then the away games that I have, they can make also. So leading to my commitment there, I really like the program and how they do well with their shortstops. Like they have so many shortstops that's come out of there and all of that. So with NC State, it was just a great fit for me. Just no, no, no holes barred. You're, you were in. I mean, yeah. you probably heard from other schools, right? Yeah, I heard from other schools, but the one that pulled me in was NC State. I'm going to ask for, for you to have a little bit of empathy. Do you have empathy for the athlete that you play with? And you have some of these on your yeah. travel team that you play against with your high school. You, you have to have a little empathy for the athlete, especially because of COVID, mm -hmm. that doesn't have a place to play yet. Yeah. And you look at them and you know they can play, yeah, right? Yeah, like I had got a text from one of the guys that actually played with me, like in the summer ball, he, was, he got his commitment taken away. So with that being said, he reached out to me and was talking to me about his commitment and how it got taken away. And I was encouraging him to like, never give up. You still got another chance out there for another school to contact you. And then the next day later, he texted me and he was like, oh man, I got a school looking at me. I think I'm about to get in. So I was like, keep doing your thing and keep balling out, brother. That's good stuff. So there's a couple of players, and this is why I asked you about that. We stopped by in the amongst of all this fight to the championship, and we found two players. One on one side, PG Select Navy. One on the other side, AZ D-back scout team. Both talented, like he talks mm -hmm. about, those guys that are right in the bubble, but still haven't found a place to play. We followed them through the day and their journey, and they explained why they are here and they hope what occurs. I'm not committed athlete that hopes I could find let's see a university that will take me in, join a big join a family, where I can play a lot, enjoy a lot, build a great lifetime relationships with, you know, give me the best opportunity, and give me the best opportunity to hopefully get drafted because that's everyone's kid's dream. And uh, and even if God forbid I get hurt, I still want to know like okay. I'm comfortable here, I can still see myself here. And that's, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, you know, it's just great to be out here, be with all the good guys on my team, and uh, it's a great experience. I feel like Perfect Game always has some great tournaments and there's great competition out here. So I'm blessed to be out here and be a part of it. I'm looking for a home, looking for uh, anywhere I can play college baseball, you know, looking for a good fit. And I feel like there's a lot of great schools out here and uh, scouts looking for people, so I'm excited. Hopefully I can get an opportunity somewhere. What part of your game do you think brought you here? My hitting. Okay, my expound hitting. upon that. My hitting for sure, you know. My, ever since I was a kid, I can hit. I think I just got given. Obviously, got to work on it, but, you know, I think I come a long way from, from hitting. So, yeah, hitting is definitely number one that got me here. So. All right, well, I'd say I'm someone that's uh, grinding on, you know, on and off the field. I work hard, have great quality at bats, you know. I work hard, find a way on base. I can swipe bags, hit for a little bit of power, uh, a lot of gap to gap hitting. So yeah, and I play pretty well in the field. I can run, throw guys out. And it's just been tough, you know, with having Corona and everything shut down, it's been hard, but I'm just looking forward to bouncing back to my senior year and it's gonna be a great year, so. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah, and it's hard with a lot of For guys sure. being granted extra years. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. are it's you considering seen, everything? I'm pretty much, I'm open to anything right now. But it's just been hard, you know? I mean, I feel like colleges are looking for smaller rosters. Now they're looking for less guys, and there's no way for D1s to really see you as much. So it's, it's, it's been harder. You know, it's a team game. You know, whatever the coach asks me to do, I'm going to give everything I have. So that's, that's all I can do, it's do, doing my best. I, my goal is to give everything I have because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity I get. So I need to make the best of it. Thank you, by the way. Thank you for uh, being my analyst. Do, do you have anything that you're, you're pushing, you're selling, any albums that are going to drop, anything that we need to tell the folks about? Anything? No, I don't do none of that. I'm just. I just lay back and sleep sometimes. I got it. 
Yeah. I got it. Who, who do we thank? We have you in this chair. Mm -hmm. We have thousands of viewers that will watch, we yeah. hope, uh, th that will watch. So who, who do you thank for being at this place in your life? First of all, I want to thank my mom because she made a big commitment on me. and she has, Yes, sir. She has, some, like, she has six others than, other than me, but I want to thank her and my dad. Charles. Charles. And I want to thank both of them to the bottom of my heart because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for my dad, I wouldn't be here. And the same for my mom. They made a lot of sacrifices in their life. Like, coming down here to Florida, my mom had to do a little summer arrangement with her work, and she put it all on the line for me and to see me play one last time. So I want to thank both of them and all of my cousins out there and everybody that helped me and got me through this process to end up where I'm at now, right now. Thank you. I'm just going to end it on this. When I had him on our Sirius XM radio show, he had to step aside for a moment because he was reaching out to his mom, bringing her a meal, picking up in his yeah. vehicle, bringing her a meal, working in COVID in a nursing home out of his workout day, making sure mom gets fed. That's first yeah. class, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. We You're appreciate welcome. it. That's a classy young man with a bright future. This is a great event. Day three in the books, the World Wood Bat Association World Championship here in Fort Myers, Florida. On to the championship we go. All right, here are your matchups. The field of 32 is set. You can find brackets, schedules, details, and all of the Diamond Cast streaming of all the games at perfectgame.org.